I have cancelled advanced integrals just so that it'll be a side thing that I can do on Sundays or whenever I want throughout the week. And I'm instead going to do topology and complex analysis both since they're tied on the voting right now. Okay, so first we look at an example of what we want a topology to be. Okay, so say we have the real line. No, like this. Say I have like an open interval, right? What property does this open interval have? Well, first of all, it doesn't include its endpoints, right? Those endpoints are not included. Uh, what else? Well, every point is somewhat inside of the set, like further inside, it's in the interior. Kind of looks like it's far away from the edge. It can't, it can become close to the edge, right? Like that point, but it can't be the edge. It's some distance away from the edge always. That's not zero, right? And why would this be a useful property? Well, if you know the definition of continuity using epsilon delta, Right? Open intervals are everything in that. It says that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that um, uh, and for every p, for all epsilon greater than zero, given p, such that the dist if the distance between x and p is less than delta implies that the distance between f of x and f of p is less than epsilon. Okay, that's what the definition says. Right here, the set of all those points is an open interval. Right over here, the set of all those points is an open interval. Saying that for every open interval in here, you have an open interval in here. Okay, so let's sort of expand on some of these ideas. What if, instead of just an open interval, you wanted to consider general open sets, sets that don't include their boundaries? Like, like uh, if I have the real line. That set intuitively does not contain its boundary. It's the union, finite union, of a bunch of open sets. Right? Now, how do I describe that? How do I describe that a set does not contain its boundary? Well, if you remember, intuitively, the open set, any point you pick in it, isn't on the boundary. Meaning that there's some distance between the boundary that isn't zero, right? It's not the boundary, meaning I can pick an open interval around it of some radius, I'll call it epsilon, such that it's completely contained inside of it. Okay, I can do that with every open set, like that open set, and I pick that point, that open interval that point right there. I can pick that interval, right? I can always pick an interval contained inside of it. Okay, why isn't this true for closed sets? Sets that include their boundary, right? On the real line. So that set right there. Okay, well pick an Endpoint set on its boundary, no matter what open interval you're going to pick, it's not ever going to be completely inside of it. No matter what. On that edge, you're never going to pick an open interval that's completely contained inside of it. Because it's on the endpoint, it's close to the outside. That's not what we want for open sets. Okay, so definition. 
Uh, we say u, a subset of R, is open if for every x an element of u, okay? So say this is my set u, okay? u. For every x in u, we need to make sure that it's not close to the boundary. There exists an epsilon bigger than zero. Okay, for every x I choose right there. Okay, for every x, I'll make this bigger that way. For every x I pick, there exists a delta such that the open interval uh, epsilon, sorry, the open interval x minus epsilon, x plus epsilon, is a subset of u. It's completely contained inside of it. Okay, so right there, that's the epsilon, that radius. The radius of that little interval, epsilon. Okay, so what's the point of doing this? Well, if you remember, continuity has everything to do with this. It says that for any open interval, for any open set in the input I have here, right, for all of those, if you look at the pre-image, that better be open too. Okay, that's what it's saying. This is the point of open sets. It gives you continuity. It gives you what we mean by you can draw it without picking your pen off the board. That's not a function. <laughs> okay, so why can't we generalize this, right? Okay, let's generalize this, right? Say I wanted to make an, this is a set in R2 that doesn't contain its boundary because any point in it isn't on the boundary, meaning there's some distance around it completely contained inside. Right? That's what it is. Okay? This is an open set. So this will give us continuity on R2 and R3, Rn. So, so, uh, we say u, a subset of Rn, is open if for all x an element of u, there exists an epsilon bigger than zero such that the ball around x of radius epsilon equal to the set of all y an element of rn such that the distance between x and y is less than epsilon, right? So you're just creating a circle, an open circle of radius of epsilon, one that doesn't contain its boundary. Uh, there. So it's that that is completely contained inside of you. So... Right? Any point I pick, I can create an open ball around it. And even if it just includes a single point on its boundary right there, okay, just a single point, it's no longer open, because no matter what ball I pick around it, it's still not going to be completely contained inside. So again, this gives us a definition of continuity. Okay, this gives us continuity. It also gives us a structure that we're very uh, glad to have because this gives us convergence of sequences, right? Because if I have like a sequence x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, and so on, right? And I think it converges to x. What does that mean? Well, that means for any open interval I pick around it, there exists an n such that for all n 
bigger than n, xn is an element of that ball of radius epsilon, or that open set u containing x. Okay, so this gives us convergence, continuity, and a lot of structure, okay? And not to mention, this gives us generalizations, the spaces that don't even have distances. Oh, yes, and this is the Euclidean distance. Uh, distance between x, y equals the sum, the sum of the differences squared. Okay, so it's just the Euclidean metric. Okay, it's the Euclidean distance. Right? Okay, so in the next video, I'll be showing a property of this which is essential.